What are you doing? What are you doing, Mischief? You're sitting there yelling at me. Hi, Grady. He's like, I'm what the people came to see. Nobody gives a crap about you and this lady. 21 years. Yes. The show is old enough to drink. The show is old enough to make people drink. Which we will now do. He's having a fake gin and tonic because, you know, chemo. Hmm. I am having a real white girl special strawberry lemonade hard seltzer. <laughs> what? What, though? Ugh. What are you doing? You are just a butthead. This cat. You're a butthead. So, to, to tell you the kind of excitement that goes on here, at, at, at 21 years of doing this, um, the most exciting thing I did this weekend was I installed a dishwasher. Ooh. That's how you know we're old. Yeah. What'd you do this weekend? Oh, I installed a new dishwasher. It's awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. We're we're thrilling. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's we we obviously we can't take out our counters because yeah. they're kind of soft. So we got a uh, countertop one. Trouble is those things are designed, they gotta hook up to the faucet and stay on there with this ridiculous um, gizmo. And I'm like, Yeah, well nice. that. So I drilled a hole in the sink okay. and I ran a hose and I installed a splitter on the hot water line and yes. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, I I trained at a new cat rescue. Oh, good. I am once again a semi-professional cat lady. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Ah, we got old. We are very old. 21 years. Nine. What the fuck? Well, I haven't been around that long. You want a cat? I don't know how many just years I've him. been around. Uh, you're about 11 now. Is that Valkyrie chirping at us? Yeah, she's rolling around on the floor trying to cue it, Simba. Oh. Hey, you've been around about 11 years now. Okay. I, I never counted, so I'm like, I've been doing it a, a while. I don't know. A lot of haircuts. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Let's get that. Ye ye yes, I know, Grady. You're loud little <laughs> right, Nobody let's... cares about you two. The people come to see Grady. It's sad how not wrong you are. <laughs> All right, let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you fixing your hair during the intro? I am, I have like a <laughs> weird piece sticking out. <laughs> this is going on the internet, okay? <laughs> It's important. Is it? Okay. <sighs> All right. Well, let's uh, kick. The All right. The, the, this stuff is still going on. The, this is the, this our our this terrible year. We all rush. Oh, let's open shit up again. Yeah, how that fucking work? Probably fine. Yeah. It's not it's working out so well. Fine. So, people are still not accepting the reality of things like, for example, if you've tested positive, your ass is not getting on a plane. Those are the rules. I, I got a hand at this guy. He came up with a novel solution, but um, he was really bad at it. Indonesian human malware positive man disguises himself as wife on CityLink flight in order to fly. 
An Indonesian man is reportedly, fading, is reportedly facing arrest after disguising himself as his wife in order to board a flight. Do they look a lot alike? Because, like, that wouldn't work for us. The man has been publicly no. identified by the... I don't think he could pass for me. No. Um, no. Uh, board a CityLink domestic flight from Jakarta to uh, Ternate wearing a niqab. A niqab. Uh, so it's a okay. covering. Covered him from head to toe. The disguise was intended to enable the man to fly, even though he reportedly tested positive for the virus. His wife, however, had tested negative, so he used her ID and negative test results in order to board the plane. Um, however, here's where I... And it's sad. The first set, it, it fucking worked. Until flight attendant reportedly told, told authorities she saw him go into a bathroom, then come out wearing men's clothes instead of the niqab, a full face veil with an opening for the eyes, notified the employ uh, the authorities who detained the passenger upon disembarking from the plane. So because he was he like he's like, well, I'm scot free, got on the plane, went in the bathroom, switch a route, and like, what are you gonna do? They're gonna fucking arrest you. What's the matter? Could you not spend a whole like four hours in women's clothing? Was it uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Some dude on Twitter today was like, "Without men, the world would end in a day." Wrong way around, honey. Y'all can't hack it. Y'all can't be us. Oh my gosh! But like. Now everybody on that plane is exposed because you are more important than everybody else. Seriously? It's, it's, it, 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 I'm so fucking fed up with this shit. We are all fucking fed up with this shit. Yeah. Why, we, why, why are we putting up with this shit? Like, everybody's sick of it. You're not the only one who's sick of it. But it's still a thing. Like, just because you're sick of it doesn't mean it's over. I'm just, he had it. He had the scam going. And that's the thing. You would have gotten away with it. Fucking idiot. But you just couldn't hack it as a woman for six whole hours. Well, we have another one of what the fuck did you think was going to happen? This is from Australia. <laughs> These guys are all right. This this dressing as a woman. That's a fucking Bugs Bunny thing. Here's another cartoon plan. Like, I swear to God, they're getting their goddamn ideas from Looney Tunes. Australian man ties bed sheets together to escape fourth floor hotel quarantine. Man in the Australian city of Did Perth. You think nobody was going to see you? <laughs> he escaped mandatory quarantine in a hotel by scaling down a rope made of tied together bed sheets from a fourth floor window. After rising on the West Coast city in an interstate flight from Brisbane, the man had his application for entry refused under the state's tough border entry rules intended to stop the virus from entering from elsewhere in the country. The man was told to leave the state within 48 hours and taken to a hotel for temporary quarantine. But just before 1 a.m. local time, he climbed out a window on the fourth floor using a rope made from bed sheets and fled the area. Was he going to try and get back in? Or was he just leaving? It's just like, I don't have to put up with this. I'll leave. He didn't think about what was going to happen next. Police arrested the man across town eight hours later, charged him with failing to comply with direction and providing false, misleading information. Um, they did not disclose man identity, except to say he was age 39 and test negative for the virus. So here's the thing. He had already tested negative, but because he wouldn't go through the proper channels to arrange his travel, he had to go. But he was special, you see. He's more important than everyone else. So he's doing this goddamn Tom and Jerry bullshit. Like, good God, man. What was the plan after that? Because you're on the other side of the country. Well, I'm just going to go about and do what I intended to do in the first place. Because I... No, they're not just going to let you fuck. You're 
you're like, oh, you outsmarted us. Mischievous scam. No. Policy has brought with it a series of escapes, including a woman accused this month of climbing down two balconies and kicking in a door to evade the quarantine. I understand that you might have something really important to do when you get to a place. And so that 48 hour quarantine is really inconvenient. The way to get around it is to travel properly in the first place. Have your shit together and plan accordingly. Man, even before all this, whenever I went to whenever I got ready for a flight, man, I had my shit together because I intended to get through the fucking airport. I had all my liquids in the little bag. I have my, you know, all my, I take my laptop out, but boom, my shoes, boom, 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 boom. Got my carry on stuff. You can't do boom. I got my passport. I got to zoom. I got, I, I had the, I had a map on my phone to tell me the quickest way to my goddamn gate. When I'm on the plane, wait for a connection. I'm like, where's my next fucking gate? I am, well, I can't. And these people are just like, I'm just going to wander in. It's fine. It's probably fine. I hate them. This is why we can't have nice things. This is why we can't have anything right now. We can't even have shitty things right now. Well, different story. This is from uh, uh, Braintree. I believe this is Massachusetts. There are moments where, when doing it with stories in the show that I'm sure people who were in them must have had a few moments when they had to, to question their own sanity. They had to think, have I finally lost my mind? <laughs> and this is one of them. I um, mean, there have been moments when I think that just sitting here. Tractor trailer with two dogs in the cab, but no driver crashes into house. Police responded to a tractor trailer crash Saturday evening on River Street. They found no driver in the truck, only two chocolate Labrador retrievers. The truck rolled down a hill before crashing into the side of a newly renovated house. None of the residents of the house were present during the crash. No injuries were reported. The dogs are not harmed. Um, nearby, okay, good. nearby resident uh, Glenn Fillmore heard the crash at probably 6 p.m. and rushed to check on the driver, only to find the seat vacant. So... You're in your house, big ass goddamn crash. And look, this is literally a big, look at that crash. Let's try and make that picture bigger Ooh, for yeah. you. Cause that, that is not a, that is, that is a, not a fucking around car crash. Let's, that, that, that is a goddamn. Okay. Come That's on. That's your dining room. Goodbye dining room. Yeah. Um, so you run over, you see that and oh God, someone's hurt. And you run over and you fling the door open and there's a couple of Labrador retrievers looking at you. At that moment, do you, think, do you think they were doing like the sad, guilty dog faces? <laughs> and then they the, won't look at you directly. And in that moment, you have to be like, did I just lose my fucking mind? Have I have I finally gone round the bend? Did I have a stroke? And am I hallucinating <laughs> all this shit? Because. Dude, was, did a car really cry? Are there dogs really in there? If the dog looks at you and is like, you want to exchange insurance? <laughs> then yes. <laughs> what if we just said all this without the cops? <laughs> we don't need to get animal control involved. <laughs> then yes, you probably have... I'm happy. You know the dogs thought they did something wrong. Because there was a loud noise I mean, technically, in it. Technically, they stole a track and trailer <laughs> and ran it into someone's house. <laughs> technically, they committed a felony. <laughs> oh, come on now. But, but somehow, I don't think they're going to stand trial. Well, you, they, they can't be charged as an adult. They're definitely under 18. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Do, do they know how this happened? <laughs> they figured no. no. They have no idea. All of a sudden, just and, and so and apparently they someone had just moved into that house too. God, I hope they were like it was two dudes in the car, and then the Wanda Maximoff wave, <laughs> and they got turned into two dogs. 
and they're trying to explain, but all they can do is bark. Durr, durr. And the guy's like, I have a wife. Uh, all right. Well, do you remember last year when we had that fucking meme where everything was cake? Yeah. That 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 weird ass fucking creepy meme where like it, we couldn't trust anything like ever. Even the toilet paper roll. That was the one that fucked with me. I'm like the whole cake thing. Well, someone apparently took the wrong lesson away from that little meme. Uh hand heroin seized after oh it's which which ah oh, that's the wrong one. Oh no, well, we're gonna have to, to. Ah shit, did I get the wrong one? It was the heroin cake? No, let's, where's, the, where's the one? Did I get the wrong one? Oh, we fucked up. Here it is. Here's the one. This is the wrong one. I actually, I wasn't gonna do this one because it's, it's kinda eh. But this one, we're gonna do the cake one. Dang it. Alright, there we go. Shut up. It's, I'm allowed to screw up. It's, I've been doing this for how long? There we go. Made agents here? seize cocaine disguised as cake. The heroin was cake! Two Vermont men are facing drug trafficking charges after a trooper stopped their vehicle for having improper... Oh, no, that's, the, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Damn it. Get your shit together, Nash. Ah, oh, yeah. Main agent seized uh, cocaine that was disguised as a cake during a traffic stop. He made... Drug enforcement agency said a tip led them to stop the vehicle on I-295. Officials say they believe the drugs were being transported into Maine to be distributed throughout Kennebec and Somerset counties. Drug agents say all in all, they seized about four pounds of cocaine and two pounds of it was disguised as a cake. Cocaine was wrapped in cellophane with coffee grounds sprinkled on top to hide the scent from the drug dogs. What? I feel like... Your reaction to opening this package tells you a lot of about who you are as a person. Because I personally would be pissed. <laughs> if, if I was expecting cake and got cocaine, I'm angry. But if there were people expecting cake and got cocaine and were happy, they're different than me. <laughs> this is like the, are you an Elvis person or are you a Beatles person? <laughs> are, you, are you a cake person or are you a cocaine person? Right, like you get a cake box and you think it's going to be a cake and you open it and it's actually four pounds of cocaine. Are you happy or angry? That should be an, a job interview question. <laughs> or like a first date question. <laughs> what are you like quizzing the first guy on the first date? Yeah. How do you feel? Do you, are you happy that you got cocaine or angry that you don't have cake? I'm angry that I don't have cake. Well, there's well, okay. There's a certain point in your life where you, where you're angry you don't have cake. You, you you pass an age where it's like I want a fucking cake. It's before that age you're like, well, I can move some cocaine probably. You don't get yeah. mass like this without cake. Like four pounds of cocaine. I I I, I might know somebody who can move that. Yeah, but now <laughs> now you're like, no, nah, it's too much work. I just want some cake, man. I I, I don't want to deal with that shit. Cocaine's a young man's game. I, got I, I just like a nice slice of chocolate cake. I got student loans until I die. Okay, I, I, don't, I just want cake. Just give me fucking cake. I can't do the cocaine. Just give me fucking I can't cake. Afford cocaine. <laughs> oh my god. I just. I the odd the fucking audacity. I mean, I think that's kind of clever. Yeah, but the, the of, of the many cocaine disguises we've covered, this is one of the more clever ones. Yeah, like, but, you remember where they hollowed out Snickers wrappers and filled it with cocaine? <laughs> yes. How many fake pregnant bellies have we seen yes. full of cocaine? And buttholes, many, many, many buttholes. So many buttholes. Yeah, look, it's a cake. A cupcake. No. 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 Um, Whatever. we got two more this week. 
Uh, first one is this one is oh fuck you, lady. Um, because Jesus, I, there's no other way to just fuck you, lady. Um, German TV reporter fired after caught smearing herself with mud to fake that she helped clear up flooded town. German television reporter has been spat, sacked after smearing herself with mud to make it appear she was involved in cleaning up towns devastated by floods. Susanna Olsen no longer works for RTL, the channel confirmed. Footage that was secretly recorded by an onlooker before it was posted to social media show uh, Mr. Miss Olin, uh, who has her back to the camera, picking up some mud from the ground and smearing it on what appears to be her face and clothes in the new segment that has since been deleted by RTL. She was reported on the cleanup operations following the extreme floods. Uh, at least 173 people in Germany and 32 people have died. Um, so this was some serious shit. Yeah, those floods were no fucking joke. In the report, the mud smeared Miss Olin, who was holding a spade and wearing a bucket hat, Wellington boots, thick industrial gloves, and a shirt with her sleeves rolled up, called on viewers to join the cleanup operations. Fuck you, lady. Like, now here's my question. Yeah. Because the idea of faking it is so you don't have to do it, right? Right. What are what are some of the reasons you might not want to help? Because you don't want to get dirty. <laughs> like, you're still covered in mud. You just don't have the good karma. Well, or you just decide you're too good to do that sort of shit. I don't have time yeah. for that. Oh my god, just put some fucking mud on I'm this. I'm on TV. <sighs> no, I, and I, I don't understand how, especially people on television, I don't understand how you don't know that every fucking person you encounter is carrying a camera now. Right? Everybody has a camera now. Everything is a camera. Yeah. The cake is a camera and also a cake. So, like, if you're going to do that, you want to do it somewhere else. Maybe inside the news van. Maybe collect up some mud, mud go hide in the news van. Uh, just... Wait, why the... There, don't help her. Or, like, actually help. Yes! You could also just actually fucking help. Like, I mean, goddamn, how, how fucking fucked up are you to be standing in the midst of this and be like... Nah, I ain't got time for this shit. Let's just put some mud on me. We'll fucking go. How broken are you in the in the just everything? You're not a good person. Something is wrong with you. No, I'm got fired. The, the even the TV station was like, oh no, oh yeah, no. no, we can't. You, oh, are, no. you are on your own. It's it's because helping would have not been that difficult. Shit, you're a TV reporter. They wouldn't even expected you to be very good at it. No. They wouldn't like, they wouldn't you give know, you the hard shit. Pick up just, a couple things. Yeah, just shovel some stuff. They wouldn't give you the hard shit. <sighs> fucking fucking <sighs> Well, all right. Our last story this week has made me incredibly happy. And I'm 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 glad we got okay, this. Okay, good, because we've had a lot of really terrible people this week. Because the mental image you're going to take away from this story is going to make you so happy. It is. And the quotes are magical. Holy shit. I, I was dying. Group of hero Gisborne grannies fight off bingo thieves. Don't mess with us. No, oh, you do not fuck with the bingo grannies. Oh my god. Group of hero nannies sprang into action, wheeling chairs, handbags, and kicking over tables to fight off two wannabe thieves who tried to rob them of $700 during their bingo night. About 30 women, the oldest of whom was 87, playing housey just after 8 p.m. on Friday, when two thieves in uh, balaclavas and draped in black burst into their game. Harold spoke with the 67-year-old hero nanny who inspired defense for friends and her friend's $700 prize pouch 
after she flipped over her table in front of one fleeing thief. Now, the, the, the quotes. We were sitting there playing housey. If you look at Pirate's Club room, they got a side door. They have to go past a table I'm sitting at to go where the money is. I'm playing and I'm thinking, who's this idiot running past me? And I thought, oh, hey, he's grabbing the money. The lady running housey, she's trying to find me and the money back. And he turned around and run back at the door. I thought to myself, bugger this. That's when I bloody shoved the table I was sitting at right in front of him. And he flipped over. <laughs> she's the, the, do not. The 67 year old describes the two young thieves as clowns. Um, Elaine Lamott was dealing the cards on Friday night and said the two young thieves weren't armed. They said nothing, came in, ran across the room where the table was, tried to grab the containers. We had a scuffle with him trying to pull the containers backwards and forwards with him, but I was determined he wasn't going to take the money. So he had plastic chairs thrown at him and no one was going to let him take her money. They got away with nothing. If there was a fucking gang war between like the Hells Angels and the Bingo Grannies, you bet on the Bingo Grannies every fucking time. Just they, they thought, oh, we're, it'll be so easy. They're little old ladies. Yeah, no, they don't fuck around. You just you. I said before, I used to have to. We used to have to work bingo as fundraiser for baton twirling. They are mean. I mean, you, 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 just 30 of them. Like, Sons of Anarchy would have been a half-season show if they tried to steal from some bingo grannies. Like, they they just, they swarmed your ass. 30, 30 little old ladies kicked your ass. I love this. This is, this is just gonna, this makes my week. gonna be like... Well, we're wanna... not even going to put you in jail. We're just going to put your faces on the news every day and explain how a bunch of little 80 year olds kick your ass. This is Elaine. She kicked their ass. <laughs> Hi, Elaine. <It's> very cool. <laughs> this is, it probably doesn't help that they tried. I don't know why the thought that the fuck they thought they could pull this off in New Zealand. Like. New Zealand people, just as a general rule, a little tougher than the rest of us. Yeah. So even 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 the nice little old ladies, they can kick your ass from New Zealand. <laughs> There's a reason they filmed Lord of the Rings down there and got all those fucking extras for Helm's Deep and shit, because they can kick your ass. Even the hobbits. Yeah. So, yeah, this made me so happy because I just had this vision in my head of them being swarmed by these little old ladies, like fucking piranha descending on your ass. They said the rugby club would be arranging for some of the players to be their security. Why? We have a title. I don't think they're necessary. We have a title. Sons of Granarchy. I don't think you need the rugby players. I I just I fuck. Yeah. Good good on. So the first thing we don't I just want to read one more quote. Uh. We were all a wee bit rattled, but after a while we got back into housey again. <laughs> they did not stop playing. No. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. Don't mess with the bingo grannies. Don't don't fucking mess around in, in New Zealand either. What the fuck were you you're from no. New Zealand? What the fuck were you thinking? Ugh. Yeah, don't don't fuck with them. They they it's some serious shit. Um, we've they learned business. If the options are to do the good thing or pretend like you did the good thing, <sighs> just do the good just thing. For like five minutes out of your whole life yeah it's it's not it's literally not gonna kill you you'll be fine um we've learned that not everything is cake sometimes it's cocaine and that would make some of us very mad we've learned that sometimes in life you go into a situation and it's dogs driving a, a semi-truck and you've got to process that somehow how do you 
report that to your insurance? How do you file that insurance <laughs> claim? <laughs> like when you call up Flo from Progressive, when you call up J.K. Simmons at <laughs> Farmers, has he seen it? Yeah. We, you know what? It's one of these days we need to get like an insurance agent on here and ask them questions about what's the weirdest shit you've seen. Yeah. Um, we've learned that you're not so special that you can pull a fucking cartoon escape from the quarantine, and you're not so special that you could pull a Bugs Bunny dressing in the other clo other gender's clothes. You can't do that. This is also, cartoon shit. Um, maybe try not being a fucking super spreader. Right? It's just, oh no, I'm, I'm. If they tell you you can't tra travel because you have the incredibly contagious thing, stay home. Like, I'm, I'm, no, I'm special because reasons. We're all going to die. <laughs> 